tonight, the man accused of raping and robbing a woman here along this Maryland trail is behind bars. However, people who live in this area say they're terrified that this happened in their own backyard. Absolutely flabbergasted. Flabbergasted that a man with a machete unexpectedly approached two women enjoying lunch before sexually assaulting one of them. This happened here at the Burnt Mills East Special Park in Silver Spring, Maryland. It's part of the Northwest Branch Trail. I hope it is extremely isolated and never happens again. Oh my goodness, Jasper. Neighbor Eleanor Ginsler says this is where she walks her dog Jasper every morning. I have always felt that this neighborhood is very safe, so this is scary news. Around 2.54 in the afternoon, Montgomery County Police and Maryland National Capital Park Police responded to the scene on Columbia Pike. Well, it's disturbing when, when any crime of this nature takes place. You, you never like to see this as a police officer. You want the community to feel safe. You want the, the park to be safe. Lieutenant Charles Smith says the attacker was captured without a shirt on about an hour later on Devere Drive after threatening another woman with his machete. It's disappointing when we have these calls and have to handle these type of incidents. The reason for this random attack is still being investigated at this hour. As Fox 5 learns more, we'll pass along any updates right here on air and online. Off the top tonight, we are following breaking news right now, learning new details at this hour of the man accused of raping a teenager and a woman in the same park that spans Montgomery and Prince George's County on two separate occasions. According to court documents just into the Fox 5 newsroom, 20-year-old Jose Hernandez Espinal is accused of approaching a teenage girl and her boyfriend at 8 a.m. back on May 10th at the Northwest Branch Trail. He allegedly followed the couple before threatening them with a large knife and forcing that 15-year-old girl into the woods near by. The documents say that is when he sexually assaulted her. Hernandez Espinal is accused of raping a woman under similar circumstances earlier this week in that same park. Fox 5 has also exclusively learned that the suspect is from El Salvador and was here in the U.S. illegally. So y'all so, so just heard that audio right there, and it was two different clips, by the way. The first one was more so... The initial story itself, giving more details, and the more updated one was talking about what occurred. And let me get out of this right quick. Sorry about that. And the second part was more so giving you more update as far as the girl and her boyfriend and basically him, in so many words, kidnapping her and then violating her. And then finding out that this guy is here illegally in the U.S. from El Salvador. Now, they gave the man's name. His name is Jose Roberto Espinal. I'm going to go and look up to make sure that his that is his name. Yeah, Jose Roberto Hernandez Espinal. He's 20. Looking at this picture, you would never expect him to be 20. He looks about 10 years older. He looks like he's 30. But this guy is here illegally, and he violated a grown woman and a 15 year old girl in the same spot. Like there's actually some cameras showing of him walking in the neighborhood and they have a picture of like the mask he was wearing. It was like, more like a ski mask that he was wearing when he committed the act in which he did. And this was back on May 10th. That was 10 days ago from the time of me recording this video. Cause I'm recording it on May 20th. And it's crazy. I'm just now hearing about this because as y'all know, I live in Maryland and silver spring from me is about a 30, minute drive is more closer to Baltimore than it is to me. I'll put it that way, but I've been to silver spring before. So I don't know. I'm pretty familiar with the landscape of that area. So that is absolutely insane. But going to was the title of how I made this video, the dangers of illegal immigration. Here's one right here that they don't like to harp on or like to talk about. They love to talk about, Oh, what's going to is going to do for the people of, those who are coming in here as far as opportunities and go but what they don't talk about is the opportunities for creeps like this to do what they're doing if y'all remember a couple years ago i think this was right i think this might have been in 2019 i can't remember exactly what year it was but it was whatever year they had started to let a dr like droves of afghans in here now granted this guy's not from afghanistan but i'm just using that as an example they let droves of afghan refugees come into the united states 
and then they placed them on these bases, like these military bases. Within the first couple of days of them being here, the first reports we were hearing was how some of the guys were there violating the women, the female military personnel. They weren't even there a whole week and already they were committing violation, acts of violation, much like this guy was doing to that girl and to this woman. This is the part of illegal immigration a lot of people do not like to talk about. And that is they will bring a lot of people who come from these countries will bring in their bad habits and their bad behaviors with them. And this is one of them. A lot of them come from these places where this is normal. And then they'll come over here and try to do the same thing here because that's what they're known to do over there. And they don't vet these people. They just let them on in. This is why a lot of people are upset with people who voted for illegal immigration. That's why you always got to know who your policy is over your politrician. They're going to paint a, a, a very nice, pretty portrait, but what's going on underneath that canvas? This guy is, a, is in my opinion, a serial violator. Because he did it to a woman and, and to, to a, a young girl, so he's also... A child molester in so many in a way as well. This this is in this is crazy. But this is the element that's being allowed to be to come over here because you're not going to vet every last person. You're not going to say, oh, this person has a criminal record. They can't come over here because they're not checking their criminal, their criminal, uh, their criminality. They're just letting them come on over just because they feel it's the right thing to do. And this is the wrong thing to do. And then, like I said, they're not going to check these people. Well, they have no papers to check. This is a problem. And then on top of that, he had a machete, which means he was threatening to most likely possibly kill them. If they didn't do what he wanted. Keep in mind again, this dude is 20. He's not 40. He's not 50. He's not, he, he, he's barely out of his teens. And already he's over here illegally, red flag, with this mindset. And the crazy part about it is he's not the only one. And the scary part about it is it's most likely going to be some more stories that's going to come out just like this. And the worst part is there probably are stories like that out there that we don't know about. And these are the ones that are flooding into our areas. Now, the, now the, the crazy part about it is the people I can tell that where he was being where they were interviewing the people because I could see the video. I can tell where they were being interviewed that this was a predominantly PC neighborhood. He didn't do this to a black woman or a white girl. I mean, or a black girl. I'm sorry. He was in a predominantly PC area. So let me pull up a, a stat here. This is the, the Silver Spring demographics, and this is as of 2022, so it's fairly recent. White alone percent is 39.1%. Black or, or African American alone is 29.3%. So it's about, about a little over, a little less than 10% difference. But white people make up the majority of Silver Spring, Maryland, where this happened at. Depending on which part of Silver Spring I would say you're in, and based on the people they interviewed, he was definitely in the white part. That's where he did his dirt. Now, he would fall under the category of this one right here, south of the Bordarian, 24.6%. So, they're the, third, they're the third highest. I'm sorry, they're the fourth highest because I didn't even peep this white alone, not Hispanic. It's, it's just crazy how they break this stuff down. So, you have white, just white at 39%. Then you have white alone, not Hispanic, Latino percent at 34 percent then it's black people at as the third 
percent, the third highest, and then them at the fourth. And then everyone else is less than 10 percent. So that can that tells you right there the makeup demographic wise, ethnic wise, if you want to put call it that for Silver Spring, Maryland. But this right here is the area he was in in that thirty nine point one percent. Because they interviewed an older white woman. Sorry about that. But like I was saying, they interviewed an older white woman and an older white man. When usually when they interview like two people of the same race in a particular neighborhood, that pretty much lets you know who the predominant race of people who lives there. But yeah, this is what we're going to be dealing with. This is who they're letting in to the establishment. Granted, that's not how all of them are, but you know that, that indictment thing is an MF. And trust and believe, if they know, if they can try to put the fit the description or put that label, they're going to do it. And you know what's so crazy? Remember when 45 has said that Mexicans or Mexico, and I know El Salvador is not in Mexico, but they will lump them in there said that they had a lot of violators over there and some other things. This guy right here with just what he did alone, he's proving his point. 